Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. It's what Brutus said when he murdered Julius Caesar on March 15th. The Ides of March, which we are recording on today. And it is if the Packers organization said, not that I loved Rodgers less, but that I loved Green Bay more. And I say, at two Green Bay, because you have betrayed us all. And my childhood has officially been taken away as my childhood quarterback is no longer with the Green Bay Packers. But we are going to get into all of that and more on Sports Talk with Dad. But as always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who had his childhood stripped away a long time ago, my dad, Tim. I lived through the 70s and 80s. Listen, got Jordan Love, next Hall of Famer. You want me? He Jordan Love should not be put into this position right now. It's a lot of pressure, and I do want to get into that. We will. And that is coming up very soon on this episode. But, Dad, I have to ask you a serious question about something here. And that is, why in the world did the Rams ever want to leave St. Louis? Uh, Considering the fans that they drew there, I think it came down to one owner who had a lot of money given to him to move. So this is a crazy thing, and and I'm going to get more positive here for this one because I'm going to be depressed later on. It's been a bad... I mean, beware the Ides of March. I mean, let's be honest. What happened on March 15th? Julius Caesar was killed two years ago on March 15th, or three years ago now. I don't even know how long ago. It feels like yesterday. The country was shut down due to COVID, and I feel like today is worse than than either of those because it, it has not been pleasant but on on this note i want to talk about another football team here because st louis drew thirty eight thousand fans this weekend for the xfl st louis battle hawks home game thirty eight thousand fans setting records that it, it literally broke records for the usfl it's a spring football league record that goes back in time to the USFL days when they had Reggie White, when they had Steve Young, when they had Jim Kelly destroying these records by 20,000 fans. I tell you what, if I'm the Jacksonville Jaguars right now, I am on the phone with St. Louis, Missouri and saying, when can we get the next plane tickets out there and where's the best place for us to build a stadium? What have I always told you? St. Louis is one of the best sports towns in America. And I hate to say it because I'm a Cubs fan, but they are. They're a great group of fans. I love they, that you're a Cubs fan now, by the way. Let's not forget was, that he was a Brewers fan not that long ago. Uh, and I've I've converted you because no, you, Wisconsin organizations seem to make stupid decisions. Yes, they do. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But St. Louis is a great sports town. They should have never lost the Rams. But a greedy owner moved him to L.A. He bought the team, moving him to L.A. from the word go. Absolutely. Which, listen, that's where the Rams came from. I get it. No, they actually came from Cleveland. Well, they went from Cleveland to L.A. Yes. And then to St. Louis and then back to L.A. St. Louis has never had a franchise, a football franchise, start in St. Louis. No, because the Cardinals started in Chicago. The Cardinals started in Chicago, moved to St. Louis, and then moved to Phoenix. The L.A. Rams started in Cleveland, moved to L.A., Moved to St. Louis, then back to L.A. They have never had a franchise that actually started in St. Louis in the NFL. And you know what the the attaching line to all that is? Bad owners. The Cardinals' owners are bad. The Rams' owner was a greedy SOB. And Jacksonville belongs in a town that will appreciate them. And we've talked about Jacksonville on previous episodes. Like I, I lived there for, for an amount of time. and. It's not a good city. It's just not a good city. It's not supporting the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a terrible stadium. It's an awful stadium. And it, Jacksonville is a great city, but it's not a NFL city. I liked my time in Jacksonville. I liked going over there. They've got great food. The beach is, great. A, it, the beach is great. The food in Jacksonville it's off the hook. was some of the best food I've yes. ever had. <laughs> the Metropolitan was 
ridiculous in Jacksonville. Like the outside of the metropolitan, Jacksonville's a great town. I, I love Jacksonville mm-hmm. for for that because it's more of a, a of a of a small town Florida feel, and it's the people out there town. are great. The metropolitan area is ridiculous. It has the most dangerous highway conversion system on the face of the earth. I'm surprised people don't die there every day. And they're not supporting a football team. If I'm Jacksonville, especially if I'm the NFL, I after seeing what the Battle Hawks just did, drawing thirty eight thousand fans, they sold out. They had to open the four hundred row to allow more people in because people were still waiting to buy tickets. If I'm the Jaguars, I am on the phone right now asking when can we move to St. Louis? St. Louis Clyde Stills. Yeah, we talked about that. And this is one thing I want in the comments below. And while you're doing that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. We were talking about it because, the number one, the Jaguars is a stupid name for Jacksonville anyways. What does Jacksonville have to do with Jaguars? Jacksonville doesn't have anything to do with anything, really. Jacksonville doesn't have Jaguars. Florida has Panthers. Florida has Panthers, but there's Blue Sharks mate in Jacksonville. You could have been the Jacksonville Blue Sharks. That would have made sense. There are other things you could have named Jacksonville. The Jaguars is a dumb name. It doesn't fit for the town of Jacksonville at all. So St. Louis, though, there's a lot going on there. And and I do think you have to change the name if and when the Jaguars move to St. Louis. And we came up with a couple different names. Clydesdales was one of them, and I think it fits so well. It does. You have Anheuser-Busch there. Mm -hmm. Who will be a sponsor. Who will be your biggest sponsor. You have Anheuser Busch there. What is Bud Light or Budweiser in general famous for? The frogs. There are the frogs, but you the have Clydesdale. the Clydesdales and the little dog that rode along. I've seen them. Went to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Went to the Budweiser uh, Anheuser Busch uh, little farm of animals. That little I farm. Call it it's a massive <laughs> farm. And they, I got to meet the Clydesdales. And first of all, that is a massive creature. It is. They're very friendly though. When trained well, uh, don't stand behind them. They do kick. But it is a massive, massive creature. I think Clydesdale fits very well. But we came up with some other names, too. You did come up with the Frogs. That's a stupid name. Cardinals would be a great fit. You obviously can't, can't do Cardinals because there is a football team called the Cardinals now, which is also dumb for Arizona. But they're the Cardinals. It's it historic. is what it is. They had to change the name already, and they didn't. What I mean, St. Louis... I mean, the arches, that's stupid. You could do that. Um, they could call them the gateway arches. That's, that's actually, or gateway to the west. I don't know. But it's, dumb. I, it, it's St. Louis. They what else brick are you roads. Them? You could do something with that. And you called the arches a stupid name? Yeah, it's also a dumb name. Uh, Clyde- Westerners you could do because it's where the west begins. No. You call them the Clydesdales. You go to the Bush family and go, want to call yourself, want the team to be called Bush? Something. Bush is probably not the best name to go with. Uh, oh, that's just wrong. I didn't <laughs> even go there. You probably want to avoid that. Uh, I think there could be some The issues. Augies? I don't know what that means. August Bush was the owner of Budweiser. Yeah, look, open, fits. it fits St. Louis. It makes sense. It does, but open it like up to the fans. But open oh. it up. Let us know what you think, if, especially if you're from the St. Louis area. You're going to know it better than we do. You could also name them the Brewers because besides Milwaukee, St. Louis is probably the beer city in the United States. Probably bigger than Milwaukee. And well, the city's bigger than Milwaukee. I don't think they would want to be called the Brewers because they've already beaten the Brewers in a championship game. That would be funny to have the Cardinals and the Brewers like in the same town. <laughs> Constant reminder of 1982, which I don't want to do. That would be pretty funny. I mean, the Rams didn't fit either in St. Louis. They obviously kept the name, but the Rams really didn't fit in Cleveland and definitely didn't fit in LA either. They just kind of kept the name. I just can't see the St. Louis Jaguars. No, it, it it's a dumb name. There should be no Jaguars. I mean, they couldn't even use the logo they wanted to use because the car company said, what are you doing? Right, because it was an exact replica. Yeah. Like, that was so thrown together at the last minute. The fact that they won that bid still boggles my mind to this day. And the only other place that they could go 
the, there will be one other city if the Jaguars say we're moving. It's going to be St. Louis or San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio and Austin will probably combine for the bid. We talked about that too. They'll yeah. build it in the middle. But St. Louis, after seeing what they brought to the XFL, I mean, the NFL has to be chomping at the bit to get a team back in there. I would think it's a great sports town. It's the heart of the country, and they support. They would be sold out for the next 10 years. They would. Whatever. They would. And, and, and looking at the, you know, one of the big things was saying, well, they weren't selling tickets anymore. The season ticket holders went down. Well, yeah, right. the owner came in and said he was moving the team. Right. The owner came in and bought land in L.A. Like the entire city's not stupid. They knew what was going on. Why would you buy season tickets for a team that's number one, bad? And number two is, you know, is leaving. Why would you get attached to a team that is leaving? Again, sports fans in St. Louis, smart well-educated they get it they're not going to be fooled by an owner they knew was being a tool no they are very smart and loyal sports fans until they get burned but man if you bring in the jaguars into st louis and that's the one team that really needs to move yes the nfl needs to admit their mistake in jacksonville and say it's time to go florida has two teams tampa is supported when they're winning the Buccaneers, they've got more of a fan base since Brady went in there. That'll change. That'll now change be now. Bad again. Miami has traditionally been a decent NFL city yeah. over the years, so they deserve a team. But uh, Jax just has never seemed to fit. No. It, it never has the Duval chant. Like, if you have to use your county as a chant to support your team, you probably shouldn't have a team. Okay, so it's decided. St. Louis is going to get an NFL franchise back. I don't know how that can't going to move. I don't know how that can happen. But once again, you know what this really proves? The Rock is brilliant, and the XFL is marketed unbelievably well, and it's a great product on the field. The XFL 100% is here to stay. I, I mean, I, has the UFF, USFL even started yet? I've heard zero of it. I've heard it. nothing about it. I don't know if they're even going to try it again. Why would you go up against something that's done so well i don't know in other fun news before we go I cry um roki suzuki is Suzaki. i apologize i butchered that i, I absolutely Completely. butchered it correct me if you want that was bad and i apologize I'm in not advance, gonna even try. but it was bad so he hit a batter and this proves by the way japan knows baseball yes. and the japanese culture is amazing and they definitely have baseball right so they have a tradition, if you hit a pitcher, especially if it's on accident, you give them candy. On accident? You mean by accident? On accident, by accident. You just sounded like a four-year-old. Again. I hit somebody on accident. Listen. <laughs> Dad's prerogative. You're my dad, and I'm going to have to change your diaper soon. So if we want to talk about somebody that's going back Ow. to be a kid again, like... We can go there. You're getting to that age. Incontinence is a thing. <laughs> and and talk about Japanese baseball. <laughs> so he ends up hitting somebody from the Czech Republic and after the game shows up with two giant bags of candy for him. Apparently that's a tradition in Japanese baseball that I wasn't aware of. When you hit somebody, you give them candy. You know, kind of as a as a gesture. I love it. I mean I it's great. great. It's great sportsmanship. If you do that in American baseball, the guy charges them out. Well, Here's the thing, though. American baseball needs to get back to the pitcher being the star. Because what right. else? Who are the stars in Japanese baseball that we see come to Major League Baseball? Who are the stars? It's the pitchers. Why? The for Ichiro. The pitchers are the, well. They they had Hideki Matsui. They have Ichiro. They have hitters come out of there too. But the stars of baseball are the pitchers. Yeah, because Japan they know how to pitch. Right. They know how to pitch over there. Correct. They do. They do. And I love it. I love the tradition to bring it back to baseball. I'm stalling. Let's just do it. Rip off the bandit. I don't want to talk about this. Do it. So big Packer news today. Ugh. Packers have re-signed tight end Tyler Davis. <laughs> he played in 31 games over the last three years. Uh, they also signed Nixon, our kick returner, back. Packer fans. I think that's all we have to talk about. Packer right? fans are being completely... Totally moronic, stupid. I don't want to. We've got to do it. That it doesn't exist. No. Can I pretend it didn't happen? No. 
can I pretend that we actually care about a Hall of Fame quarterback that wanted to end clearly his career the, in Green Bay? Clearly, the franchise we allowed him to do it. Uh, this Aaron Rodgers had one goal in mind. He's been there for 18 years, the longest 15. tenured Packer of all time. He wanted to go out like Hart Star, okay. the guy who mentored him when he got here. He wanted to retire a Packer. He has been a loyal and outstanding representative of the Green Bay Packers. All these fans who are trying to push him out the door, oh, good wins, don't let the door hit in your ass. You guys better remember what it was like when we didn't have a quarterback. The problem is, is that nobody does. I've had two losing records Ugh. my entire football fandom. Yeah, well, welcome. Like, to I started following football, what, probably the Super Bowl year? I was yeah. seven. Yeah. Uh, when when the Packers won their yep. first Super Bowl in forever. Should have won two. They should have won two, but that's when I started following them. Right. And since then, we've had eight and eight seasons, but we've had two losing seasons. We had one in 2005 where we went four and 12. And then we had one uh, the the last year of McCarthy was, we, was a losing season. We went from an unbelievable Hall of Fame quarterback to an even better quarterback. Well, that's the Hall crazy of Fame thing quarterback. Is we, we got lucky, right? Because we went from Brett Favre and then we went to somebody better. Which is insane considering Favre is one of the top 10 or 15 quarterbacks of all time. The legend. Uh, he is. <laughs> he is. He's not a top five like everybody was claiming. You don't throw as many interceptions as he did. He threw a billion. Okay. But. And Rodgers comes in. He's efficient. He's great. People talk about him being a diva. I mean, he, he, he's a, he's a top tier quarterback. I mean, at some point you get to be allowed to be a diva. He's one of the top five of all time. Maybe top three for skills, for accuracy, for just field general. You don't do better than Aaron Rodgers. Oh, it pisses me off more than anything. Brian Goodenkunst. And by the way, in case you hadn't noticed, we're talking about the fact that Aaron Rodgers announced today that he's going to be a Jet. And before I get into what pisses me off more than anything, the ball's on the Packers, right? In this whole thing. To try to blame it on learned, Rodgers? Well, not only that, we learned today that the only thing holding this up is the compensation that they're going to get for Rodgers. Like, you went out publicly. On, on You're, the president. Radio. The president of the team said, well, Rodgers will be back if, if things don't work out the way that we want. Like, you, you've you lost all your leverage. You've the, shown you want to trade Aaron Rodgers. You've lost your leverage. And in case you're, you're lucky if they give you a third-round pick. Well, and in case you haven't heard, they want the same compensation that Detroit got for Matthew Stafford. Which Detroit took on Jared Goff's massive contract. They're looking for multiple number ones. They're looking for they, or, um, their quarterback. Best quarterback. Zach Wilson? Zach Wilson, thank you. I was going to say Zach Brown. Country fan. You better not trade for Zach Wilson if you think Jordan Love is they, the guy. That proves me right there that you don't believe in Jordan Love fully. Correct. I don't think they do. This like they, isn't. They didn't believe in Aaron Rodgers fully. That's why we drafted Brian Brom and uh, what's his name in the seventh round, Matt Flynn. This is nothing more than to use a Top Gun line. Kuda Kuntz writing checks with his ego that his body can't cash. There's just no reason to be doing this. Rodgers is still at the top of his game. He had no weapons last year. Did Kuda Kuntz at one time during his tenure go and get him a top level wide receiver, except for? Uh, Devontae Adams, who he traded away last year. And that back, wasn't that wasn't even his back to back pick. years. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but back to back years, you throw away, literally throw away the best wide receiver in the game. And then the next year, you throw away one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game who wants to be in Green Bay. Brilliant. I don't get this at all. In in in, in Aaron Rodgers' entire career. The Packers have drafted zero, zero offensive skill positions in the first round. Watch, they're going to draft a wide receiver in the first round this year. I will. Devontae Adams wasn't his draft pick. He's, he's given him no weapons. None. Devontae Adams was not his draft pick. That was Ted Thompson. They took away his number one option. And Correct. believe me, on McAfee, Rodgers made no bones about the fact that he misses Devontae Adams. Correct. He made it very, very clear. And what bothers me, though, is hearing all this nonsense about Aaron Rodgers is an all-in. Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs. Mm -hmm. And last year, even though he had no weapons, by the way, zero weapons. And a broken thumb. He had a broken thumb. 
and he played with a broken thumb. Which, by the way, you're not all in. You, you're you, you can't be not all in and play with a broken thumb. And here's what bugs me: when Favre was playing with a broken thumb, look at the warrior he is. When Rodgers is doing the same thing and playing probably at a higher level with no receivers, yeah. Oh, he's just he's hurting the team. Why are we not playing love? Because he's not as good. That's why. You had a better chance to win with Aaron Rodgers, and you just let your better chance to win go out the door without ever going all in for him. Like, let's talk about that. People complain and say Aaron Rodgers wasn't all in, which is nonsense. The Packers never, never went all in for him at all. They got all over Rodgers for not going to the OTAs last year. But he didn't yeah, go two- to the OTAs when he was two-time MVP and nobody had an issue with it. Correct. And now and they're going, well, he had young receivers who didn't even know the flipping playbook yet. And that gave Love a chance to work with them. And Rodgers came in and coached them up. And by mid-year, they were playing at, in some case, well, Watson for sure was playing at a rookie of the year level because he learned how to catch the ball. Oh. It's going to be interesting. And, and it's an unfortunate situation for Jordan Love. I like Jordan Love. I think he's a good kid. I Me really, too. really do. And I think he, I, I hope for his sake, he is the next Hall of Fame quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. He's almost going to have to be. The, the the situation he's being put into right now is is a lot of pressure. It's now he's an all he's an NFL quarterback, he'll figure it out. But you are being asked to replace one of the greatest players of all time at that position. Who who wanted to be there? Yeah. I mean, this is less fair than than Rogers having Favre come back to Green Bay in, in a Vikings uniform because Favre wanted out. He did. Favre didn't want to be there anymore. Favre forced the hand of the Packers to trade him. They went out to Mississippi to try and convince him to come back after he said he wasn't retiring. And he didn't want to come back. He, he wanted nothing to do with it. They, he didn't show back up till training camp. Like at that point, decisions have been made. Like he knew what he was doing, and it was to get himself out of Green Bay and into Minnesota. All these people who are saying that Rodgers is dragging this out, it is March 5th. The league year starts at 4 o'clock today. And he made this decision on Friday. Correct. Now it's the Packers holding it up, trying to get more compensation when you've given up all of your leverage in this trade. If you're going to walk away from Aaron Rodgers, just walk away from Aaron Rodgers. You had your chance to trade him before. And and Rodgers even said this on McAfee, and I agree with it. If, If he didn't win those MVPs, this conversation would have been had a long time ago. Sure. But, dude, you talk about chips on a shoulder. Congratulations, oh. New York Jets. You're going to have Jesus. a guy ready to light it up, and he's going to have some of his weapons, plus the Jets have weapons of their own. Kuda Kuntz is basically looking at Jordan Love going, my career is on your shoulders. Right, if you don't perform, we're all fired. As they should be. And Jordan Love is a smart kid. Yeah, He's a guy who's showed up and just kept his mouth shut and learned. Good lessons. Rodgers has treated him infinitely better than Favre tra- treated Rodgers. I don't think Favre treated him anyway. I don't think he talked to him. He just ignored him. Yeah. And Barstar told Rodgers, just watch and learn. Right. And he did. And credit to Rodgers for learning those lessons. But Rodgers should be there for the last year. They didn't get him the weapons. I, and I'll tell you what. The Packers organization, back when Favre was there, decided not to bring in Randy Moss. They would have won the war- Super Bowl with Randy Moss. They would have won the World Series? World Series, yeah. Two years ago, the Packers could have brought in OBJ, and the Packers win the Super Bowl if they bring in OBJ that year. They wouldn't pull the trigger. This is a front office disaster of epic proportions. They never bring in the one last chip they need. When Ron Wolf was here, he went out and got Reggie White. That's why Elliot Wolf needs to be the GM of the Green Bay Packers. This is where not having an owner hurts the Packers, and it's been, it's been said for a long time. But it, at the end of the day, our, our quote-unquote owner, at least the guy who runs the organization in, in Mark Murphy, I mean, who, the, who does that? Who comes out and just bashes a player that gave you a Super Bowl, that gave you several MVPs, that that's, loves Green Bay? In, in his thing on McAfee today, he mentioned actual players places in Green Bay that he's going to miss. He mentioned actual people that he got to know in Green Bay that he's going to miss. He loved that city. And the city loved him. And the great thing about Green Bay, you can be a superstar in Green Bay and go to the grocery store and you will not be bothered. Somebody will say great game to you. Yeah. And that'll be the end of it. They know you have a life to live. He's not going to get that in New York. 
The question becomes now, what number is he going to wear? It can't be 12. I'm sorry. I am so deathly against that. You, you know, don't I am bring too, numbers down. Because I don't ever want to see 12 come down in Green Bay. I don't care who it's for. I don't ever want to see 12. I don't ever want to see four. I don't ever want to see 92, 15. I don't ever want to see 15. Can you imagine if somebody came in, if Tim oh. Tebow was being talked about coming to the, the Packers at one point, right? Can you imagine if Tim Tebow came into Green Bay and took down 15? People would have revolted. And, and Tim Tebow is Jesus Christ himself. Well, and, and I'm sorry. When Manning went to Denver, that number shouldn't have come down. No, it, it shouldn't just, have. When, when uh, Jerry Rice went to Seattle, Steve Largent's number shouldn't have come no. down. Change your number. I don't care about people's brands. I care about teams' traditions. Joe Namath has come out and said he can have the number. Screw that. Both, both. No, he shouldn't. You He's know why Rodgers won't take down 12 in Green Bay? They're in, in, uh, in really? New York. And I truly believe this. Because he never wants anybody to wear 12 in Green Bay again. And I don't blame him. I don't either. If I was in Rodgers' position or Joe Namath's position or anybody that was so great nobody could wear their number again and somebody came and asked me if they could wear my number i'd say no you can't i earned that exactly that's mine i changed, you can't have that in the case of joe namath it wasn't just that he was a great jets quarterback he changed football correct he's he's retired because he won the jet super bowl but he is retired because he changed football forever he is in the hall of fame because he changed football forever not to Jane, J Joe Namath. I am it's okay. all sorts of pretzeled up today. Uh, I uh, <laughs> Okay, if you look at Joe Namath's numbers, Joe Namath may not be considered a Hall of Fame quarterback, and it's a no ha fault of his own because he got hurt so much in the second half of his career. He was like, if you look at it, he was, he was great in the first part of his career. The second half, he was so beat up. New knee surgeries at that time were butchery. Right. But he belongs to be in the Hall of Fame for that very reason. And the same reason I believe Doug Williams belo belongs in the Hall of Fame, because he changed football forever, being the first black quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl. His numbers aren't there. He had one good year, but he made such an impact to the game. He belongs in the Hall of Fame. And Roger, Instead, we see Kurt Warner as a first ballot Hall of you, Famer. I we knew. Didn't do anything. I saw your eyes, and I wanted to stop you before you went there. Stop it. Rodgers could go back to number eight, pick another number. It's not about brand anymore. It's about franchise legacy. Right. He's got, Rodgers has a legacy in Green Bay. He will be back in the Packer Hall of Fame. He will be on the Ring of Honor. His number will be retired, as it hoping. should be. There should be three different ceremonies. Yes. But it should also, and, it, and I hope Favre comes back when he does go up there, just like Star went back when Favre be. went up there. <laughs> as long as some legal things work out for him. Well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> but... It, it, and, and mark my words, he's signing a one-year deal with the Jets. Yes. He will be in Detroit the following year or Minnesota. Who? Rodgers. Will be in Detroit or Minnesota the year after he's in New York. You want to run that by me again there, Chief? He's going to go to the Jets. He's going to play a year. He's going to follow the full Favre. He may not go to Minnesota. Yeah. He'll go to Detroit, and he will come and stick it up the Packers behind an inch at a time. Twice. Listen, I cheered for Favre in Minnesota. I'll cheer for Rodgers in Detroit. But I just think he's going to do it. I think he's going to go in, win a Super Bowl with the Jets, and retire. Well, if he does He, he that, went yes. into the darkness saying, at least today, he said that he was 90% retired when he decided to go on his darkness retreat. I don't think he, if if he won the Super Bowl this year, then he he's wouldn't retired. be playing. Yeah, he'll retire. But if but he I doesn't, think he's pissed at the Packers for being terrible human beings and a terribly run organization right now. I'm sorry. I I mean, this is this is just as bad as Brutus and Cassius stabbing Julius Caesar forty times. It's the same type of betrayal. These this guy's giving you everything, and you decide to just. He has been the best in the back. He's been the best representative of the Packers since Bart Starr. And by the way, it's not I'm not saying Julius Caesar was the best thing to happen to Rome, okay? <laughs> I don't want to see in the comments or anything about how Julius Caesar was terrible. I I know the history, I get it. I just use it as an example. He actually loves Julius Caesar. Hey. You know? Anyways, I, Aaron Rodgers 
has been an outstanding representative of the Packers, better as good as Bart Starr ever was. Yeah. And you can disagree with me. If you do, put it in your comments. Put it in the comments below. While you're Ooh. down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. Even on days like this? I still enjoy making the show. It just hurts today. It really does. I'm really sad. I'm very sad. I'm depressed. I, for the it first... really is an end of an, at least for me, you know, I'm 33 years old now, right? And 30 was hard, right? Because I, at 30 years old, and anybody that's turned 30, you've turned 30 twice, but anybody that's turned 30 years old. Really? You had to go there? I mean, you have. Yeah, well, true. Okay, go. But it's like, you have to be an adult now. You're grown up. But you know what I had? Aaron Rodgers was still my quarterback. And you now, had a charmed life. You, I, now, we had you at the right time. Favre to Rodgers. And I hope, I pray, we go Favre to Rodgers to love. The odds are that against That would be it. lovely. That would be insane. Yeah, first time ever. And I will buy Rudy Cruz like, a steak dinner wherever he wants if love is a Hall of Fame caliber player. I'll say it now. Yeah. Peter Pan left, man. It's over. No longer a lost boy. My quarterback is gone. I'm so, you know, I do find ironic. It's what? really a definition of irony. Woody Johnson's with Johnson and Johnson, right? <laughs> Wonder if they talked about the vaccine at all. I just that. find it really funny and ironic that, you know, Woody Johnson, who's part of Johnson and Johnson, who created a COVID vaccine, and Aaron Rodgers went through all that non vaccinated stuff. And now somebody whose company created a vaccine for COVID is now doing everything they can to get an unvaccinated what is my one of my all-time favorite funny. one of my all-time favorite movies is tombstone is the hypocrisy there was no bounds yeah i almost butchered that but i got yeah, it out Val definitely did it better oh you think <laughs> Val i think the Val Kilmer didn't win an oscar for that bothers me a lot like that was probably the best performance Val Kilmer ever had and i don't think it's appreciated as such it's not appreciated the way it should be. It, that movie is just... Between him and Kurt Russell, I mean, it's one of the all-time greatest movies. All-time great westerns, and it is... Movies. Okay, movies. Western. It's Western also sucks. one of the most accurate depictions of what actually happened. In you need stuff. to explain to me, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but we before we go into... Because I know we have one more thing we need to talk about here. Which is probably more ridiculous than this whole Rogers thing, honestly. But I do want to ask you about westerns what is with you and westerns i don't get them like to me westerns suck they're terrible no they're not they're really bad no they're not the clint eastwood spaghetti westerns are the most overrated things on the face of the earth besides scarface excuse me Ta -da! i watched movie. it i just watched it last i fell asleep i watched it over the weekend good bad ugly was on yeah, it was not good. It, it was, was bad, good. and it was no. ugly. Okay, so we'll get into it. They real should quickly. just take out Stop. good and call it bad and ugly. No, John Wayne movies are awesome. Maybe. I love them. They're okay. I grew up watching westerns with your grandpa. We watched Gunsmoke. We watched Have Gun Will Travel. We watched Bonanza every week. I had to fight with my dad to watch. Were Those we going to watch shows. Batman or we were going to watch Bonanza? Bonanza won. Well, then but, Grandpa was wrong. But the Westerns, like McClintock is one of my favorite. True Grit, obviously. A great. True Grit was great. Are you I'll give you True me? Grit. McClintock okay. is overrated. McClintock, you got to watch it for what it is. It's just a fun Western. I did watch it for what it was. A bad movie. No, it's not. No. No. Anything with Maureen O'Hara or Catherine O'Hara. I don't know. Is it so bad? You don't even remember who was in the movie. Oh, well, Marine versus Catherine. Anyways, it's a whole genre John of Wayne. movies. It's, they're great movies. Leave it alone. I love them. I watch them. It drives you nuts, I know, but I watch them. I just leave. They're, they're bad movies. No, they're not. Sons of Katie Elder. Oh, great overrated. movie. It was okay. It's a great movie. I sat through it. Dean, Dean Martin, Martin was good. Dean Martin. John Wayne. But it was like, I mean, you want to talk about over. Earl Holloman was in that. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the evil lead in the. I try and forget too. Oh, stop it. I mean, Great it was movie. all overacting. You probably don't even like. I mean, Cool Hand Luke was almost a Western. Cool Hand Luke was dumb. 
Again, also an overrated he movie. He should have won the Oscar for that role. The the egg okay, scene can was we, stupid. Can we stop? To, to I'm just curious because in. we have a lot of people of my age, right, that watch this show. We have some people that are still alive around your age that watch this show. A lot of them do. And I just don't get it. Like, I've tried watching these movies, and I like older movies. I do. I don't get westerns. I don't get why they were so popular back in the and day. And yet, Tombstone is one of your favorite movies Tombstone ever. Tombstone is is one of my favorite movies. There, there's something for everybody in every generation. I don't like mob movies that much. I really don't. However, Casino was still great. Godfather was still great. You don't like Good Good Fellows, though. I don't. No, I didn't like that movie. I understand why people like it, but I don't. It's I'm a not, creepy movie. It's. I wasn't the biggest fan of that movie. I think the issue with Good Fellows it was so built up to me to being this great movie. And then it's like, well, it's it's good. Where if I just would have watched it on my own, I would have been like, oh, it's a good movie. Scarface, I don't get why people like it all. I, I'm not that movie's fan. stupid. I, it, but I've watched the Godfather movies, good movies. I didn't watch three. I was told good for not watching three. I don't know. Uh, but westerns don't make sense. Yes, they do. They're, They're just, great movies. It's the same formula too. It's not like none of them are different. They're all the same. Good guy in the beginning walks in and everybody thinks he's a terrible guy. Is, and then he meets some girl. Hold on. And, and we find out this guy's actually a good guy. Okay, and okay. then he faces some real bad guy. And then the guy rides off with the girl. In other words, it's the same as Star Wars and Harry Potter. Okay, Star Wars is, is, a, is, a, is a sequence of movies. Star Wars Harry is Potter nothing. Harry Potter is a sequence of movies. Star Wars is nothing but a Western with sabers. Okay, you're, you're talking about trilogies, right? The Star same. Wars in a trilogy. They're we- they're, I don't know what Seven is called in a group Western. of movies. They're Western. They're, it's called a murder of movies. Or is that murder of crows? I don't crows. know. Anyways. I don't know what you're trying to say. I think a group of crows is called a murder a of murder. crows. So we'll call seven movies a murder of movies. What? Leave me alone. Cool. Let's go talk about sports. But hold on. Again. I'm trying, folks. I really am. It's You're talking about sequels. You're talking about groups of movies that go together. Westerns, they're though, they're Westerns. different movies. They're still Every Westerns. Every John Wayne movie is exactly the same. Every Star John Wars Wayne movie. John Wayne rides on a horse. But but Star Wars is again a sequence of movies. But it's the same plot: good guys versus bad guys. They've got the sabers, yeah. and then they, somebody steals the girl. It's the same thing. It's not though. Like that's not Star Wars. Oh my god! Really? And and, and in the westerns though, it, the problem is it doesn't matter if it's John Wayne or anybody else in those westerns. It was the same story. Here's this burly guy that walks in, who everybody doesn't understand, and they think he's just bad guy, and then he meets his girl, and then. They get together and we find out in the movie, hey, he's not that bad of a Pretty guy. Pretty much like Star and then Wars. He beats some real bad guy, and everybody in the town now loves him. But wait, you probably he's not going to stay in that town. He's just going to ride away. You don't even like. You probably don't even like the man who shot Liberty Valance. I don't. Oh my god! No, I turned it off. John You're... Wayne, Lee Marvin, Jimmy freaking Stewart, the Shootist. You probably don't even like the Shootist. I haven't seen that one. You've never seen the shootest? No. Why would I watch? I bet you I can tell you the plot. Bet you can't. Bet you this burly guy walks in and everybody doesn't understand him. And then you find out in the end he's actually the good guy. Actually, that's not the plot. I bet you it is. I bet you deep down it is. Scatman Crothers. Let me ask you this. Is there a guy that walks in that's a big burly guy that everybody thinks is a bad guy? If it's a John Wayne movie, of course there is. See? Thank you for proving my point. It's not. He comes in. He's a former killer anyways see stop see stop same as every other movie that any other western you, had you ever made just describe star wars as well can we get back who's to- the big burly guy that walks in really han solo as a secondary character he wasn't the main character oh uh, and but it's he wasn't the hero a, of the movie it's a good it's a good guy good versus, versus evil is in everything guy. it doesn't change that the plot of every western is exactly the same it's- that's why tombstone's great that's not the plot of the movie it's a great movie. I just had to understand. I've been meaning to talk to you about that for a while, and unfortunately, it on today of show. all d- on today of all days, when we're mourning the loss of Aaron Rodgers, you go there. Yeah, I did. Wow, I did. I had to understand why you enjoy westerns. I just don't get it. Aaron Rodgers loves westerns. I'm no, sure. he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Yes, 
He is the understood man of the hour, though. It'll be interesting to see what happens because the trade hasn't gone through again. We're filming this. I would not be. By the way, Kudakuts is still sitting there going, do I have the guts to really do this? Don't I have the guts to really do this? If he doesn't get what he could, could you imagine this all falling through? I would love life so much at that point. I mean, at this point, the Jets are sitting there saying, yeah, our trade offer just went down. Every like, hour. The, the Packers are on the wrong side of this. They're on and the I clock. don't think they realize that they're on the wrong side of if this. If I were the Jets, I would be looking at the Packers going, you take this deal, and in 15 minutes, we're pulling something back. Yeah. And what are the Packers going to do? Nobody else wants to trade with them. They can just play it like a bad Western. Don't like you right now. I, I I love you, but I really don't let me, like. Let you. me ask you though, Dad. When you <laughs> were sitting, when all these terrible westerns were playing on your TV, and the Packers were really bad, what was that like? Painful. A lot it like of being a Cubs fan. Uh, considering there were only a certain amount of days, Sunday afternoons was spent doing other things rather than watching <laughs> Packer games. You'd watch for a little bit. Yeah. You'd see that this was not going to go well. Yeah. And you'd go and enjoy a beautiful fall afternoon. Yeah. Cubs games were always fun to go to. Cubs games are a blast to go to. At least they used to be. I haven't been in a while. It, Packer games is going to be interesting because the Packers have sold out since 1960. 61. Whatever. Make me a liar for a year. They did. What happens if the Packers now start to lose? Will people still sell that stadium out? I don't know. I don't either. I, I For the first time, I don't know the answer to that. The The season tickets will still be bought, for sure, but I don't know. I mean, look what happened to the last game of the year this year mm -hmm. in the Lions game. This is a Packer team that wins, and they get into the playoffs, and there were just as many Lions fans in Lambeau as there were Packer fans. I've never seen that before for any team ever, especially not with playoffs on the line. Like, if that's not a shift in, in the way the Packers feel, Packers fans at least feel, I don't know what is. I don't know, but I think they're warming up the tar and collecting feathers in Green Bay if this thing doesn't work. Yeah, they're going to get the Dan Devine treatment if this doesn't work. I mean, but then again, you have no. Packer fans that think that this is the good, oh, the good decision. They're idiots. And I don't understand people like that. I, am, I love people in Wisconsin, but they are idiots if they're happy that Aaron Rodgers is walking out the door. It's it's really not seeing what's on the other side. It's not paying attention to what other teams have gone through. I don't want to become the Lions. I don't want to become the Bears. I don't want to become any of these teams. Because here's what I'm nervous about, okay? And this is what scares me more than anything. is We've lived with two great quarterbacks, right? But I've also seen other pl places in the league, and I'm going to use the Raiders as an example here, where you have a mediocre quarterback, knowing it could be worse because you could have a bad quarterback. Right, and and the Raiders were with Derek Carr for so long, who was never great, who was never going to take you to the promised land. And I'm nervous that's what Jordan Love is going to be. Like I either want him to be so bad that we start over, or I want him to be so great that he's the next Hall of Fame quarterback in Green Bay, and we go four to twelve to ten. And I'm hoping that's what happens. But I, I don't want him to just be okay. I just feel. So bad for the situation that kid's being put into. And he is, a, I mean, he's a kid. Yeah. He's 25, 26? No, younger than that. I don't know. I don't know. But he's being, he's putting the entire weight of the entire organization isn't just being dropped on his head. It's being thrown on his head going, save our jobs because we're making a bad decision. Oh, oh. Go down. Ugh. 24. Okay. So even worse. He's smart. Yeah. He's athletic. Yeah, He had a swagger for the 10 plays he was in with Philadelphia. He's, he's getting got, a shot. He's got Tom Clements back, which I think Tom Clements did yeoman's work with him last year, but now I'm worried. Yeah, It's just not fair to him. And, and they could have picked up his fifth-year option, paid him the $20 million, and still had Rodgers for one more year, and maybe gone and got Rodgers some weapons. And we would have had a chance. If we have Devontae Adams on that team last year, we may have been in the Super Bowl. We would have definitely been in the playoffs. Oh, we would have made a run. I mean, here's the only thing. We're still left with a coach that really doesn't do well in high-pressure games. No. 
So we've got a GM that doesn't get any temp. I mean, he had a good draft last year, but traditionally yeah, hasn't gotten done real well in drafts. And then we have a coach who is surprised when somebody says, well, I guess we're going to punt. Who has a Cameron. kicker run out on the field. Right. That he never told to go out in the field. No, he just made the decision on their own. Yeah. Okay. But are we done? Again, Tyler Davis is going to be back. Are we string tight end? Are we are we done with Packers depression? We've got it out of our system. Kind of. Yeah. You know, I, I understand the whole Packer thing. I don't understand why you like Western still. But hey, you know what? I think you and I have had a a, a good show. Uh, a lot of whining. I'm very, very sad. I don't want to see Aaron Rodgers go. But hey, you know, I'm going to buy a Jets jersey for sure. I'm a Jets fan this year. I want Aaron Rodgers to go and win the Super Bowl right off into the sunset. All right. Marv didn't get to do. I will buy a Jets jersey if he wears number eight or four. He could wear four in the for the Jets. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. That would be really funny. But as always in every conversation, the dad gets the last word. It is all you. So, you know, I love baseball. You yes, do as well. I do. I always complain about Angel Hernandez being one of the worst umpires of all time. Yeah. He's been beaten. I know what you're talking about. Watching Mississippi State Valley, Mississippi Valley State versus New Orleans. Yeah. Pitch is thrown. It's a ball. Yeah. The batter contests. Contested. It, and he wasn't he wasn't rude about it. He just said that ball was outside. So the umpire figures, oh, you want to see a bad call? Watch this one. The next pitch is four feet outside rings him up and just walks off the and field. walks off the field to the conference credit the sorry sob was suspended indefinitely the next yeah, day he should be fired he should be fired and never umpire another game it was what really killed me was the catcher for new orleans <laughs> goes in and just walks this guy away because he knows he's going to go after the umpire and justifiably so but he calmed the situation, which all good catchers do because catchers are the smartest players on the field. But they're not stars. They're the absolute stars because they to everything you. runs through them. To you. No, to everyone. No. Catchers control baseball. Pitchers need to just listen to their catcher. Pitchers may be the stars, but without catchers, they're throwing into the stands. Move on. So anyways, if you haven't seen the clip... Go look it up. It is the most horrific call I've ever seen in my life. I felt sorry for the kid. He was rung up on a bad pitch. The only good news that came out of it was the umpire was. I fired. mean, listen. The end of the the end of the game was probably already decided. It was like seven to three, Doesn't and matter. it was the last out. But that's the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my entire life. I sent it to you as one of my late night texts. You actually woke up and sent it back to me, going. That this is fake. <laughs> it was the worst thing I've ever seen. Definitely check it out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. As always, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let us know what you think about Westerns being the worst thing no. ever invented. And Aaron, come back. And Aaron, love you forever. Thank yes, you for 18 great years even when you were a backup you had amazing mustaches so thank you so much for 18 great years these are two packer fans that are going to miss you very very much and wish you the best of luck in new york we'll be cheering you on from there this has been sports talk with dad and we'll see you next time bye everybody